What's going on YouTube? We are Green and Garb and we are bringing you an exclusive early first look at the 2024 D&D Player's Handbook. We went to Gen Con this weekend. Yes, we there did. there it is. We six weeks early. Can you imagine that? We had to get in the queue in the morning at like 6 a.m., a digital queue. Mm -hmm. And then when we got there, it was only 700 per day. We had to wait in line for a couple hours to get the book. So this is not sponsored. All our opinions are ours. And we, we got did. it and we're bringing it to you. So, get ready, we're gonna be bringing you a whole series on everything Player's Handbook. You're gonna be getting a video from us every single day until we cover everything that is 2024 Player's Handbook. And you're gonna know what's great, what sucks, what's coming back, and the, good, the bad, the ugly. You? Yeah, all Everything. of it, all of it, all of it. And there's lots to love here and some changes we're also not so sure about. And some of it we're gonna be testing out at the table as many of you will be. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we want your opinions. We want your input. We want you to engage. Tell us what you like, what you dislike. And we will continue to be making content about this for a long time. So it, let's dive right on in. So the player's handbook, uh, what's new? Well, the art to start with. The art is absolutely exquisite. Yeah, the, the art is incredible. Everything is detailed. If you're a visual learner or somebody who really appreciates interesting art that's evocative and really gets you into the fantasy of Dungeons and Dragons, well, this book is, uh, that's a big plus for it. I love the treatments that they give. There's so much inclusive art styles. There's, 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 abilities for you to imagine yourself as a character in the world of D&D. They even have these certain canvases for backgrounds that it just has the background. There aren't any characters there so that you can really visualize your character stepping into the D&D multiverse and, and where they came from and how that informs your storytelling and the adventure you're about to go on. So the art is also included in all the subclasses. Every single main class has four subclasses. So there's some new ones we'll be covering and some old ones that have been reworked yes, for the better. Yes, lots of reworks. Because the 2014 handbook, when the classes first came out, some of them are pretty weak, especially as iterations and more source books have come out. Uh, but those have been improved. Some classes, like my favorite class, Paladin, has got a big old nerf. <laughs> big L. <laughs> uh, but yeah, overall, so that's it. So all the classes have their cool art and we'll be covering them one by one main classes and subclasses here on the channel. So not only that, uh, but going back to the beginning of the book, before you even get to the character creation and the classes, um, they've actually detailed how the gameplay works. As Which in, like, is <laughs> new and exciting and wonderful. Let me tell you, yeah. we realized that you know part of the reason we're making these videos is because people are who are new to D&D, who are new to tabletop role-playing games, they're going to be looking for a tutorial. But D&D in the past, just jumped you straight into character creation. And now at the beginning chapters of the book, it's gonna be walking you through how to play. So I think that's a huge benefit. Some of it is a little, you know, of a brief overview, but right. just the idea that there is something that actually says, this is how you mechanically play the game, steps one, two, three, four, five, essentially, it's and what, really beautiful. And what role play looks like at the table. And Absolutely. What, how D&D &D flows. So that's very good if you're, especially if you're a new player looking for extra details, yeah. right, on, on the system itself. That's very good. I think I, I would recommend this book for new players if it's something that you're looking to get into. If you're, again, a visual learner, I think that's all a big boon. Is now, this book. there are some things that are missing from the player's handbook. Mainly there are as we have seen over the last 10 years, there have been tons and tons of supplemental materials that have introduced new <laughs> characters, new species, new so many things. And, and they did do a great job of compiling that list of, of all the classes with their four subclasses, but there are some things that aren't there anymore. Now, the nice thing is, is that if it's not in the new player's handbook, it's completely backwards compatible. So if you don't, if you want to play a, for example, the wizard that's been left out. The blade singer. The blade singer, there we go. That is, you can just use the blade singer's most recent rules. And that is totally workable until they release something else. Not only is it backwards compatible, but this will all be releasing, not all of it, but a majority of it will be releasing the 5.2 SRD. Um, you know, after the, after the OGL, which would be in Creative Commons. So um, if that's the case, you can always wait. I would say when it comes to the subclasses and some of the backgrounds, which are now 
uh, part of your character in that they provide stats and feats. There's there's some power here, I think. If you're like a min-maxer, I, yeah. this could also be something you want to get in <laughs> on early uh, because there's there's a, a lot to a lot to love here as far as mechanically and, and crunch-wise. And making it more straightforward. I feel like there were a lot of things that, you know, some classes used to get their subclass at first level and some got it at second and some got it at third. You know, if you've been following the the, the playtest material, the Unearthed Arcana, most of this is not going to be super unfamiliar to you. But they have codified it and put it all in a format that's really easy to read. They've made the typeface just a hair bigger. The font is bigger. Boy, does it make a difference. Yeah. It's just all these small little things that add up to create a really enjoyable reader's experience. I've been playing D&D for a long time, and I'm going to be honest with you. I flipped through the player's handbook from 2014 quite a few times, and rarely have I ever been like, oh, this is something that I can or would want to read. Mm -hmm. I have been reading this. And I, I can't express how exciting that is to have something that is so well laid out. It's not perfect, nothing is, but it's it's a darn good improvement. Yeah, they definitely had a lot of, it looks like a lot of UX designers or people give feedback on this. Mm -hmm. For example, the subclasses, we'll go back to again. Uh, they are very well laid out. Like you have a whole page on one side that's a whole subclass. Boom, boom, boom with all the abilities. And another one with it to joining are very visually complete and neat and all there and ready to process very easily. 100%. Uh, very, very, uh, yeah, engageable. Uh, one of the things that I'm most excited about, and we're gonna be doing a whole separate video on this, like I said, we're gonna be bringing you every subclass, every species, every class, magic items, weapons, everything that we can possibly do. Um, and if you like that, please continue to like and subscribe, smite that like button. And, but yeah, one of the things I'm most excited about, sorry, going back to that, is the weapon mastery. Mm -hmm. It allows for the first time for martial classes to feel like they scale more similarly to spell casters. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's not the same and it's not just forcing magic onto you. Um, but it allows you to have specific weapons that do specific things in specific situations. It makes those choices of what you're bringing into combat so much more important. Be and before, I think it was just a lot of like, what's the biggest die, you yes. know, for my particular class that I can wield with martial or simple weapons. Yeah, and now with the weapon mastery, the sky's the limit in terms of the creative possibilities that exist out there. Now, not all classes have weapon mastery, but with the multi-class everything, you can probably get in there if you really want to. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the martial classes get it. And if you've played Baldur's Gate 3, you probably saw this coming. In fact, I made a video some time ago when we were talking about one D&D. I said, wow, these might come into Baldur's Baldur's Gate 3, a weapon and masteries, right? You can do kind mm -hmm. of once a short rest. I uh, will probably come into D&D &D, and lo and behold, they did. Uh, so I know Sudam is that. <laughs> uh, yeah. But uh, they are very interesting, and you can do them unlimited amount of times as long as you have access to them. Some of them let you do damage even if you miss, or have lots of like a, like a cleave effect, and we'll talk more about these weapon masteries in another video. Yeah, the biggest, I think the biggest buff that I've seen now, a lot of the classes have gotten huge buffs, but mm -hmm. the biggest buff I've seen is we went from, for the last 10 years, we have had the completely, in my opinion, unplayable character, which is the monk. Oh, and let me tell you, I would consider <laughs> playing a monk. I really sure. would. I mean, mm -hmm. it, the things that it can do mechanically now are so fun and fresh, and it brings it finally up to the power of the other classes. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like, you know, there are always have been your standout classes that are the the strongest or the go-tos or the favorites. The most gishable. Warlocks. Yeah. <laughs> but now being able to have the monk be playable, be at the level of the other classes, mm -hmm. is and, and some of the other classes that have gotten that benefit as well. Yeah. It's and just so exciting. Too. It's just so exciting. It is. And generally, you're going to find everything about the player's handbook has been buffed uh, from the font size to the classes <laughs> uh, to have everything. The rules are more condensed. Some things are explained more clearly. For example, the now... Where you, when you cast a bonus spell, right, a bonus action spell, mm -hmm. then you couldn't cast a level a level spell and so on. Now the rule is simply that if you cast a spell that has that uses a spell slot, then you can no longer cast another one, right? But mm -hmm. there's some ways around that. And we'll talk about that. And there's lots of rules such as that that have been refined and better defined. 
We got a chance to sit into many panels this weekend. We'll be bringing you some content more specifically about that, but we got to listen to the actual creators talk about their process. Jeremy Crawford, Chris, Chris Perkins. Perkins, what they have put into this and, and the things that they're most excited about. And it was really lovely to get an opportunity to be in the room with these, these giants of the industry, the, the people that have brought us this game and have really... Uh, catered to the love of it, you know, uh, for the last several years. So right. it's it's it was really lovely to get a chance to speak with them and and ask questions. And we weren't the only ones at Gen Con. Many people attended these panels. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of fun. And there's a D and D live event. Uh, it was all. And there's some shorts in the video if you want to see what that was yeah. like. So. Yeah, we're excited for this. Uh, we know it hasn't come without some difficulties along the way for the past couple years, but we're here and we're excited to cover this. There's more, I mean, the feats, equipment, uh, it's all kind of been UX'd as well. Your experience mm -hmm. is better. It's almost like you're going to a shop for all these things. Lots of new spells. Mm -hmm. uh, the spells have been reworked. Some have been buffed. Some spells are insane right now. Like uh, con all the conjure spells are extremely buffed mm -hmm. and extremely exciting. So expect to see some of your favorite D&D YouTubers making some Awesome multi-class builds, and, and the sky's the limit, really. And our 3D6, I'm sure uh, that's going to be a great place to get your next awesome builds. Absolutely. And we're going to be bringing you builds, too. Again, as long as you guys are excited about this content, we're going to keep bringing it to you. We obviously are primarily, at this point, an actual play channel, but we have a lot of really exciting projects in the works, mm -hmm. things that are going to be suitable for all ages. And really, the next chapter of bringing D&D and sharing it with the community, we just we couldn't be more thrilled to have the opportunity to get this little bit of a sneak peek and I agree. bring it to you early. So. Agreed. And But we not only do we just play D&D, &D, we also we play Vampire. We support a lot of third-party publishers. We play them here in the channel. Mm -hmm. They're not just all fantasy. We also do sci-fi. We'll be doing a special sci-fi show coming up here in a couple months. Can't uh, say anything <laughs> more. So yeah, we, well, we do love D&D. &D. Uh, we support a lot of content creators. We support a lot of publishers as well beyond that. In fact, Planescape, which we're running around the channel, is Mage Ham Press's Vault of Spire Secrets exclusively. So we, we cover all that here on the channel as well. Yeah. We're really excited for this next chapter of Green and Garb and this next chapter of D&D. Right. Um, we hope you are too. Leave us your thoughts in the comments down below. Please, we'd love to engage with you. We try to look at all the comments and, and respond as much as is humanly possible. All right, I've been Dr. DM. <laughs> and I'm the Mind Flayer Slayer. All right, and this has been our review, our overview of the D&D 2024 Player's Handbook. I hope you get it soon. More information to come. Get ready. Take care.